Hello and welcome back student. Today we will start with the new topic that is paper chromatography. It is divided in two part, part 1 and part 2. The learning outcomes. The learner will be able to explain principle of paper chromatography, discuss operation and steps of paper chromatography, describe advantages, disadvantages and application of paper chromatography. The paper chromatography was first introduced by German scientist Christian Scorbin in 1865. The paper chromatography is considered to be the simplest and most widely used chromatographic technique because of its applicability to isolation, identification, qualitative and quantitative determination of organic and inorganic compound. Paper chromatography is defined as a technique in which the analyte of unknown substance is carried out mainly by flow of solvent on specially designed filter paper. It is a type of planar chromatography in which paper is support for the stationary phase. So in last chromatographic lecture we have studied that the chromatography can be classified in two classes, uh, various classes depending upon the depth of separation as planar chromatography and columnar chromatography. In planar chromatography, we have studied the two examples that is paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography. So that planar chromatography where the surface separation is to be done, we are studying here. It is a partition chromatography. You are observing paper as a solid, still I call it as a partition chromatography because the stationary phase used in paper chromatography is liquid which is deposited in network of cellulose fiber. The paper is only acting as a support to hold this liquid on its surface. So the mobile phase, the liquid solvent is uh, used as a mobile phase. Uh, which will separate out the component by partitioning between the two immiscible liquids. So therefore, it is also called as a liquid-liquid chromatography. Now you pause this video and write the definition of chromatography, what we have studied in the previous lecture before we go in detailing of the paper chromatography. If you have finished, play the video and check the definition what you are written. Chromatography is a physical method of separation involving differential distribution between the two phases. One phase is percolated through the other phase. The former is known as a mobile phase and the latter is known as a stationary phase. Again, the same principle is there that is of differential distribution by using the partition chromatography. So when we are studying the principle of paper chromatography, it is based on principle of preparation of compound, partition of the compound between the two liquid phases. The water poured in the cellulose fiber of the paper act as a stationary phase and act as one of the solvent. When a non-aqueous mobile phase moves along the paper, the components of the loaded mixture distribute themselves between the two phases in a ratio characteristic of their distribution coefficient. So it is a partition chromatography. Definitely the substance will get distributed between the stationary phase and mobile phase. The nature of the stationary phase and mobile phase are important. The stationary phase is polar whereas the mobile phase is non-polar. So one more part of your chromatography that there are two types of the chromatographic technique. One is called as a normal phase chromatography and another one is called as a reverse phase chromatography. In normal phase chromatography, we are using polar solvent as your stationary phase and non-polar solvent as your mobile phase. But in the reverse phase chromatography, we are using non-polar uh, solvents as your stationary phase and polar solvent as your mobile phase. Here paper chromatography is a normal phase chromatography. The component is more soluble in stationary uh, phase 
moves slowly while the component which is more soluble in mobile phase moves fast. The component should spend sufficient time with stationary phase for efficient separation. As a result of differential movement, component gets separated onto the paper. We are measuring the distribution coefficient that is the ratio of solute in the stationary phase to the ratio of the solute in the mobile phase. While looking to the principle of paper chromatography, two parts are important that is a capillary action and solubility. What is a capillary action? That is a moment of liquid within the species of a porous material due to the force of adhesion, cohesion and surface tension. Okay, so when we dip the capillary, uh, the material rises on the capillary. Same principle occurs when we dip the paper into the um, liquid. So this liquid will travel to the paper against the gravitational force that is due to the capillary actions. This liquid is able to move up the filter paper because it attends to itself is stronger than the force of the gravity. Opposite direction it moves. The second principle is the solubility. The degree to which a material that is solute dissolves in the solvent. Solute dissolves in solvent that has similar properties. So you have to remember one principle of all chromatographic technique that like dissolves like. You see, if you are dissolving, you are determining the polar solvent, polar substance, it should be dissolved in the polar solvent. If you are determining non-polar substance, it should be dissolved into the non-polar solvent. So, like dissolved light is a basic principle for all chromatographic separation. This allows different solutes to be separated by different combination of solvent. Separation of components depends upon both their solubility in the mobile phase and their differential affinity in, to the mobile phase and the stationary phase. What we are doing actually in the paper chromatography, the component of mixture to be separated is appearing as spots at the different level on a chromatographic paper. So we are cutting a paper of appropriate size depending upon the size of your chamber. We are marking a baseline and on the baseline, we are giving the spots of the reference and sample. For your understanding purpose, you can see the spots of different colors I have given on the baseline. This chamber, uh, this paper is to be kept into the chamber, which is saturated with the environment. So, the chamber is filled with the mobile phase and it is allowed to get saturated to a sufficient time so that the environment will get saturated. Then uh, after dipping the paper into the mobile phase, it start traveling and depending upon their differential distribution characteristic, the substance will move at the different distance in the chamber. So we can find out the distance moved by this substance and the distance moved by the solvent front and that is known as the retention factor or RF value. We can find out the RF value for uh, comparing the unknown sample with the known substances. And we can um, take this RF value to find out the or identify the substance. This RF value what we are observing, we cannot take it as a reference value of book. Because various factors are affecting this RF value actually when we are doing the performance. And the, therefore, we need to spot the reference material and sample material on the same paper so that we can compare the RF value of reference and standard. So what are the various factors which are affecting these RF values? Are the solvent system. Solvent system means what is the composition of solvent system? What is the polarity of solvent system? We should have the sufficient polarity of the solvent system. Otherwise, if the uh, solvent is not polar or the mobile phase is not polar, the spots will not move. They will remain on their baseline itself only. If the solvent or mobile phase is too much polar, all these spots will move to the solvent front and no separation will occur. 
so optimization of composition of the solvent system is desired and that is the uh, solvent system selection temperature uh, definitely temperature will affect the viscosity and the rate of movement of liquid onto the stationary phase so temperature is important so in your determination what temperature you had used and the reported value what temperature they have used that is differing the observed and reference rf value second is the quality of paper and direction of fiber so what there are the different qualities of paper we are observing these qualities of papers and everything in the second part of our presentation so here uh, the direction of fibers and quality of papers will change the rf value because what type of paper we are using that will decide the um, rf value that will decide how much distance it travels on the paper so this differs from paper to paper so direction of fibers means if you see the newspaper if you tore the newspaper it will break into the uneven uh, parts but if you uh, tear a simple white paper or ruled paper you can see it can tear it into the straight line because of the fibers directions if the fiber direction is on the same side you will get the even rf value so direction of fibers also plays an important role then distance to which the solvent runs so we know that what is the rf value rf value is a um, distance traveled by the solute divided by distance traveled by the solvent front so if um, we are keeping the distance uh, of the running minimum it will not efficiently separate the um, substance so we should give the sufficient uh, run time for separation of the material and we are not knowing the reference uh, rf uh, well reference time and observed time so we should spot the reference material and sample material together quality of water use many times the water may contain the inorganic impurities and that will interfere in your determination so what sort of quality of water we are using for your determination will affect the rf value then method of development in the second presentation we are observing the various methods of development ascending paper chromatography descending paper chromatography circular paper chromatography ascending descending paper chromatography two dimensional paper chromatography so this it, this should be mentioned in the reference uh, rf values otherwise we cannot compare the observed and the reference rf value then concentration of separated substance if you are separated substance if you are uh, spotting very high concentration of separated substance uh, substance to be separated it will cause the tailing effect okay so you should know how, how much quantity is applied onto the plate onto the paper then size of tank and saturation if you are not having a sufficient saturation the substance will not going to travel on the paper or it will not get properly separated so you should know if the bigger tanks are there sufficient time should be allowed for saturation of your uh, tank which is used for the chromatographic separation then method of drying many time if you are using uh, certain methods for drying it may leads to the movement of the spot or the opposite direction <coughs> then we'll see the applications Paper chromatography is specially used for separation of mixture of having polar and non-polar compound. It is used for separation of amine acids, peptides, alkaloids, sugars, lipids, etc. in the biological samples. If the proper visualization method is adapted, it can be used. And then it is used in determining organic compounds, biochemicals, in the urine samples it can be used sometime for evaluation of inorganic compound like salt and complexes to study the structure of amino acid composition of protein we can hydrolyze the protein and we can give the spot of that sample onto the paper we can run the uh, chromatogram and we can compare the spots with the standard amino acid so you will get the composition of all amino acid which is present in your protein sample it is used for analysis of blood hemoglobin urine 
etc., which is of the great diagnostic value. We will see some advantages of chromatography. Equipment required is very simple and can be made easily available. Compared to the other chromatographic method, paper chromatography is a cheaper technique because very simple equipments we are requiring. The high efficiency separations we can get with the paper chromatography. Analysis require a low amount of the sample. Very small quantity can be separated as compared to your column chromatography. The separation can be effected on micro, semi-micro and macro scale. The homogeneous isotopes, isomers and thermolabized substances can be separated by using this paper chromatography. So, uh, we cannot use the heating methods like gas chromatography to separate out the biological substances because they will get destroyed. So, this is a thermolabile means the temperature sensing substances can be separated by using the paper chromatography. It is again a very fast technique, short time is required for separating the components, but it also has certain disadvantage like this. Spraying with corrosive agent for identification is not possible using the paper chromatography. In many um, visualization technique, we need to spray it with the corrosive substance like sulfuric acid and that sulfuric acid will react with the alpha cellulose of the paper and destroy the paper. So, we cannot use the corrosive substance for spraying purpose. Volatile substances cannot be uh, separated using the paper chromatographic technique. So, we require TLC for the volatile substances. Paper chromatography cannot be uh, computable with large amount of samples because the stationary phase quantity hold is very small. So, it may saturate your stationary phase. So, we cannot give the spot of the higher concentration. A very little quantity of the sample should be applied. Quantitative analysis is not uh, possible with the paper chromatography. We can go for the quantitative analysis with the HPTLC which will give you the quantitative informations. It is only useful for the qualitative analysis. Paper chromatography cannot be used in separating complex mixtures because sufficient distance or stationary phase quantities are not available. So, complex mixtures may require more time or more uh, modified stationary phases for separation. So, modifications of your stationary phase needs which is very possible with the thin layer chromatography. As compared to HPTLC, HPLC and TLC, paper chromatography has less accuracy. <coughs> then data cannot be saved for longer period because there are the chances that your spots may get evaporated out or it may get charred out due to the spraying react uh, agent reaction. So, we cannot save it for long time. We have to take out the photographs and we have to save. So, these are certain disadvantages of paper chromatography. Thank you. Thank you very much for and happy learning. See you in the second part of this presentation. Thank you.